Hi, everybody. Ted Haggard here from St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, my wife and I currently serve the storehouse, which is the house church ministry of St. James. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, you can go to the storehouse.homes, the storehouse.homes, and uh, that'll give you what you need. It's a static website. But it's just informational. Okay. Yeah, today we are in Genesis, the 37th chapter, which is Joseph's dreams. Now, God gave promises to Abram, who became Abraham because of the covenant. All right. Then he had Isaac, who received that blessing. Then Jacob, who received that blessing. Then Joseph, who received that blessing. And Joseph saved he, he, the things that happened to him caused this small group to become a nation while they were in Egypt and caused them then to become Israel, the Jews. All right. So it's an important thing to understand that Joseph is incredibly blessed and it caused him great trouble. All right. Where his brothers were not that thoughtful and not that insightful and they became jealous. All right, so that dynamic going on in the world and in families. Uh, this last Christmas, there were a couple news reports about kids shooting either their parents or other kids because they thought their brother or sister was getting more for Christmas than they were. Jealousy does incredible things. I mean, how many uh, marriages have ended up with somebody being killed because somebody gets jealous of somebody else? But the issue is we Gentiles, those of us that are not Jews, we can be engrafted into the blessing and the uh, covenant that Abram was given by believing in Jesus. And so the Abrahamic covenant of all those blessings is available to us by believing in Christ. So we're translated out of spiritually being a and physically being a Gentile like I am into the blessing of the Jews of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And to understand that is very, very important for us as Christians. Okay, so once we love God, once we are called according to his purposes, then all of a sudden, everything in our life has meaning. Now, people will say there's a purpose for everything. That's not true for people who don't love God and for people who are not called. It's only true for people who are called and living for his purpose, because that means God is in charge of their life. So whether it feels good or bad to us, all things work together for the good. All right. For people that are secular, their own, they, they, don't want Jesus to be their Lord. They want to live their own life. Accidents happen. Random things happen. Sometimes God will intervene and be involved, but that's not guaranteed to them. In Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. All right. So God causes all things to work together. OK, so I want you to see that in Genesis, the 37th chapter in Genesis 37. It says this is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half brothers, the sons of his father's wives. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Okay, you see it? He 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 was a tattletale. Okay, so verse 3. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of the other children. Okay, everybody. Right there is something we have to understand. We're all different. Some of us respond to God with humility. Some of us respond to God with arrogance. Some of, God, some of us respond to God with worship. Some of us restore, respond to God with hostility. All right. And our response to God generates something in God's heart. Just like those of you that are parents, if you have a son or a daughter 
that loves you, that does what you ask, that is responsive, that is thoughtful, that you're proud of, that's one situation. All right. If you have somebody that's rebellious, hateful, um, uh, just embarrassing you every step of the way, that solicits a different response in you. All right. So here it says, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. Now, for dad to give you a gift, that's a wonderful blessing, unless you have brothers that are looking at it and are jealous about it. All right. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of him. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, there you go. I don't know that that was wise. But he told his brothers about it. They hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in a field tying up bundles of grains. Suddenly, a bundle, suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before me. Okay, that's not the way to be popular with your half brothers. However, Joseph was falsely accused, but all things work together for those who are called according to his purpose and who love God. Then he went to prison, but all things work together for those who are called and love God. All right. Then he was betrayed by other prisoners who forgot him essentially. Okay. Then he finally ends up in Pharaoh's court. And because of a series of things that would appear to be bad, he became the second in command in Egypt. Then there was a famine in Canaan. So, so his half brothers came to Pharaoh's place, Egypt, and needed food. And it turns out they had to bow before Joseph, and they didn't even know it was him. Okay, so Joseph saved the entire group, and then they ended up in Egypt. And while they were in Egypt, which appeared to be a bad deal, they became a nation. And when they became a nation, then they were blessed with the gold of Egypt as they left and started going back toward Canaan. Okay, so we have to understand all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called for everybody else. They're on their own. Once in a while, God will intervene and it'll be a wonderful blessing. Most often, the devil is in charge of many things that go on in their lives. And it's just important for us to know that even when we think we're having a bad day, it's going to turn out to be good. In 2006, I went through a horrible scandal. It was terrible. All right. Now, when I look back on that, I realize it saved my life. It rescued me. It was an answer to my prayers that I could grow in the Lord more powerfully. And I think it saved my life physically. My dad died of an unexpected heart attack at 58 years old. My grandpa died of an unexpected heart attack at 58 years old. My great grandpa died of an unexpected heart attack at 58 years old. All right. Just pro just after uh, or my scandal. See, I was the president of the NAE and I had Jim Dobson and those uh, types of media leaders on uh, in our membership. I also had. Very, very different people in our membership. And I think the, uh, so I was always pressured between the different groups within evangelicalism. And I think the election between Obama and his Republican opponent, I think I would have received so much pressure that I would have died. But instead, I had a scandal. I believed all things work together for the good. So that scandal was bittersweet. I don't recommend that to any of you. All right. And uh, it was bittersweet for me. It created major change and alterations in my life. Most people thought it was the end of my life, but actually it rescued our family, all of our kids and my wife. We all became closer. And I think it saved my life. I'm 67 years old now.
I climb mountains. I ride ATVs. I uh, I'm all kind. I love living in Colorado and doing the things we do. But I'm 67 and I feel good. And I love my friends and my family members. We're very close. And I think God rescued me in 2006. And so everybody that saw that discipline and saw that surgery that God was doing, most of them couldn't stomach it. But I realized that that surgery, though it was bloody and though it was painful, rescued me. The same thing happened to Joseph when he showed up with his beautiful new coat from daddy and his brothers were jealous. So they sold him into slavery. They wanted to kill him, but they ended up selling him into slavery. Then he was in Potiphar's house and his wife was jealous for him. She wanted to have sex with him. He wouldn't do it. So she falsely accused him. He went to prison for that false accusation. And then in the series of events, he became the most power, second most powerful man in the world. And because of that, Israel became a nation. So everybody love God, respond to his calling and trust that all things work together for the good, for those who love God and are called. So when you hear somebody say, everything happens for a reason, well, that's nice of him to say that. That's an acknowledgement that there is a supreme being navigating things. However, it's not true. Unless they love God and are called according to his purpose or involved in something with God's people. All right, everybody, that's enough for today. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. <music>